overcome so much adversity in so many of their games. Like whether it's from a strategic nat nature, the fact that they would drop to the lower bracket after being knocked down by TSM earlier in the tournament. Uh, they just seem to find solutions, even when uh, when the games are in not perhaps the most ideal spot. At the same time, how many games have OG actually in this lower bracket until the Grand Finals been down severely in any game is the question, right? I think the laning stages for the most part have been all right. Um, and now now is the time to continue that streak so you can close it out. All right, we go already. Some good vibes here between the two teams as they get ready to get things started. Let's see, see if TSM FTX can indeed push this to a game five or if OG can take the championship title here on this game four. Of course, TSM FTX, they have shown us already one time this series how they can deal with the Seb Wim Ranger. This is what happens when you give the players an extended break after game number three. They prepare all of the all chat pre-game. So now they've had time to think about who they want to shout out, what they want to request for game five. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny to see. It's, it's almost like, you know, the, the vibe has kind of reset. Like they, they went and had a, had a little snack, had a break in the back with a clear mind. And let's see who, which team that favors more. Maybe this is a, a much needed break for TSM after losing two back to back games. A little bit of a reset could definitely be helpful for them. Interesting setup here from OG. They, they were going to try and look for first blood down bottom. They had Tiger sticking around for an opportunity, but they won't be able to catch any TSM FTX. So, of course, he'll head to the top. Look to back up Yuragi. And that final pick for, for OG. And how does sort of the, the prospects look for a carry Bloodseeker uh, in this sort of match? Will there be a lot of opportunities for him to run freely around the fight and cause chaos? I think it's the least obvious pick that OG went for for me. Uh, I guess the logic here is that they're trying to you know, they have some decent synergies with Arena into Bloodrite. They have uh, Shackleshot into Bloodrite and obviously Storm Spirit pull into Bloodrite. So the Bloodrite synergies are there. But a lot of the times when I look at Blood Bloodseeker, I look at playing it with a lineup that has a lot of reliable spread damage so that you ramp up that thirst and you can start running over fights. And you don't have any of the really traditional Bloodseeker pairings in that sense. So maybe they still feel like the fights are going to be tooth and nail and they're going to do enough for him to, uh, to snowball it out. We'll say he, he's not necessarily playing against the best core matchups, right? Both Dragon Knight and Wraith King are heroes that can kind of stand their ground when they get ruptured and aren't dependent on moving a lot. Uh, but against the Leshrac, I think the rupture could definitely come in. We're going to see them try to make a, a bit of a move here with the Inkswell. Oh. Blood Bright won't quite clip the two of them. Sableite Moon able to step out to the side. Thanks. And looking at things down on the bottom, of course, as I said, you know, Silence is not a hero that we're seeing that much at all. How, how much can Dubu do down here in the lane to keep Tomato's farming safe? Uh, not that much, I think. Both, I think both laners are going to farm. Uh, Amar and Tomato should both have a pretty good time here. It's, it's similar. The, the Windranger Mars lane can kill with level three, I think, potentially, especially on Dubu if they find a Shackle Shot, in which they can then combine into a spear. Um, but yeah, TSM's lane's offensive potential is very limited. And they didn't pick Silencer for the laning at all. Like, I think they identified that they could handle it. And that's always going to be the trade-off with Silencer. He's not one of the strongest laners. Oh, there's the exact play we talked about. Nice counter, though, from Tomato. Yeah, immediate stun there onto Amar to make sure that he can't follow up with any sort of spear potential. So good save from him. Top lane again. Trying to get aggressive onto the TK, but at this point, save a life. It's not a too much vulnerability to the burst. Bottom lane, Seb. Dubu's very, very low here. What sort of baiting Seb to hunt around the tree line for him? He'll turn with the curse. Seb, going to take quite a bit of damage from this one. Will live, and in fact, he's baited them into maybe set up for something themselves. They turn with the shackle into the spear. The charges will be there for Tomato as he'll try and run away from this one, but Amar and Seb, they'll take him down. First blood for Amar. And top lane as well, TSM. Need to be careful here, Moon getting very low. Immediately, yeah. Yuragi tried to strike whilst he was boosted up by that passive. Exactly. They're putting so much pressure in the bottom lane that it's helping their safe lane quite a bit. So Amar and Seb, very, very useful for uh, Yuragi's game, even though they're on direct opposite sides of the map. And, and you, you see this weakness of Silencer in a situation like that, right? Like, you've used your spells, the enemy team outlives them, and they start trading, and you don't have much left in the tank. You don't have a low cooldown spell that you can throw out again. Really get it done. Okay, save for life. He's trying to take down Tiger. And uh, not enough damage on his own. And now Yuragi might have the chance to chase him out. Sableye getting low. Cooking from Moon holds back the Bloodseeker. 
Yeah, Brian, another blood right. Now. The light. Oh, oh, he's going to get caught by it. Yuragi takes him down on the top. 2-0 already. OG starting to pick up the kills in these lanes. How was that enough damage? I, I really didn't think that was going to kill him. That must have been on the edge for how much health he had. It's 120 damage level one. Yeah, sure. I wonder if we get on the replay the HP that he had, because <laughs> it must have been... That's really close, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Not always indeed you see that level one blood right getting the kill. You see it again here on the replay, how close it was. So he's up to 90. He's I mean, he must, quite he must a lot. pick up very close. The... Oh, it's so close. Oh, oh. <laughs> literally! Yeah, on I mean, the yeah, HP. it's 120 pure damage, ladies and gentlemen. It was literally the same amount of damage as HP that he had. Oh my goodness! No wonder it looked oh. as close as it did. <laughs> my lord! Oh, poor old. I, I didn't think it was that, that close. That, it really was. <laughs> right, back down bottom, Seb. See if we can get away from this one. The skeletons—they're going for it, but Winrun's going to be back up in a second. Oh, he's away, just in time as well. That, that second skeleton about to get a hit. In. Moon Meander, PZM is on his, on his tail. Can't continue though, or he would die to Bryle. Oh, oh, never mind. He's gonna go for it. I mean, he has Tiger to help out. They take down Moon. Nicely done. So he baits Bryle to chase him to the right first, and then he can go and finalize this kill without putting himself at risk of getting followed up on by Lesh. So, wisely done there by BZM. Three kills already here for OG. Here to get a bit of a lead in the lanes. Huge amounts of farm already on Amar and BZM. Top CS for them. So you said, come back in the mid. Feel BZM back up. See if they can set up for the power room. See, see whose hands it falls into. Six minutes in, it's going to be BZM. He gets a haste. Definitely has the potential to get something done with that. And this, this feels so good for Amar, right? He's gone triple Bracer, and he's leaning against Wraith King as Mars. He's level six, Tomato. He's straight in for the kill, and Just Amar is able to walk in and take it. So far that ahead was... in this bottom lane from that early start, he was a full level up on Tomato and immediately converts that into an arena kill. Even getting, you know, he wanted more. He started spearing Dubu there, but look at these connect. quick moves. Top lane, we're gonna have a TP over from BZM as OG bait in some action. They set up with the Xbox stun over towards Sableye. Zip forward, Sableye. He cannot escape this. There's gonna be too much magical burst coming after the storm as BZM catches him by surprise with the TP top. In the meantime, Seb is going to get some space. So, effectively, what OG have done here is that they traded a little bit of Wind Ranger experience away bottom to get Amar level six faster. Seb is low level right now, only level 3 sitting in that mid lane, but look at what it gave them. Gave them a solo kill bot, Amar needs no help any longer, and now Seb can sit and take mid while Storm rotates top, so just textbook stuff, moving the heroes around in this early laning stage and getting huge value. Very comfortably at the top of the net worth, two of their cores, and Bloodseeker, almost third, might actually get third if he manages to farm up this stack together with Taiga. Even rank, even level one stroke of fate actually does so much damage to a triple stack. Yeah, they should be able to clear this. Yeah, you'll get it. Less moon. Oh. They can try and steal some of this from OG. Okay. Got a bit of it there, Saberlight. Got a couple of the medium value creeps. Actually, they steal it. William. They, they, chunk now. Yeah, they get the majority of this. Tier that went better than I thought it would for them. So good steal here from the two. Maybe with the cookie setup, they could try for a kill. Immediate Phantoms of Race does come out to try and slow down the silence. That will get the chance for the Tiger to get the ink spell off himself. So Rupture. maybe I can't commit for the kill. Moon's going to opt for the TP out. He's ooh, away in time. Heads up play there. In the meantime, bottom lane, Amar. Again, Tomato will retreat to the jungle, and that's going to be two thirds of a tower claimed by a solo Mars. Like, this isn't any involvement from a gank or a pushing hero, anything like that. No siege creep either. He's just slowly over time whittling away at it. Tomato cannot solve this lane on his own at all against the Mars with triple brace and soul he's ring. so tanky he's here early super, on. This itemization is incredible value for the time being. And Amar knows exactly how to get, get the impact with it that he wants. Absolutely, it makes it very unappealing for TSM FTX to make some sort of half-hearted move down here to deal with him. They'll have to bring the numbers if they want to try and threaten Amar in this early game. Yeah, I think theoretically speaking, even Leshrac rotating down here isn't a guaranteed kill. If there's any TP rotation from a Storm, that could end badly. Because they have to burst through 1,600 health 
on that Mars, and Wraith King is not going to do much of it, that's for sure. So, yeah, only Leshrac can really do that. And they just don't want to use the resources there. They're going to look for their own move top instead and likely just concede Radiant bottom tower. tower is under attack. As it stands, though, Tiger, the only one showing on the wave. Ideally, TSM FTX, they want to find Yuragi. They may just have to settle for Tiger, though. Saberlight reveals himself with stun opener. Take out the support. With Brile around, they'll get some damage done to the tower. Yuragi will have to step out to the side. High chance the TSM will, will get the objective out of this movement. Yeah, Brawl's got four points in Edict, so in 10 seconds this tower is going to be taken out, unless Oach I mean, are actually planning this. This is a high risk but high reward move from them. They're bringing in Amar as well. He's teeping over, they're ready to try and get the action started. Sableye's been ruptured, Arena's down, Spear Control, Sableye, he's going to be going out for sure. Off to the side as well, Seb catching Moon with the Shackle. As they take the kills and keep the tower alive. Most teams drop that tower, and I love that OG defended it. Such a good play call there. They're going to get the zip over as well. BCM, he's back over towards the mid. He's going to get the setup on the Brawl. Brawl in trouble. Caught out by the X-Force stun. He'll, he'll get taken out. The curse is there on BCM. He is fine. Yeah, he's fine. Quick moves from OG from defending the top tier one to making the move on Brawl in the mid. Eight to one and a 2K lead. OG off to a fiery start. Again, BZM finds himself the Fairy's Trinket in this game. So he has Fairy Trinket as well as three Nulls. So a lot of mana cost reduction here in his build. Just converts to so much damage and it puts even more pressure on Tudubu as well as the Dragon Knight. I think these two heroes together are their key to unlocking a solution to the storm. But with the disadvantage they're under already, it's, it's going to be a little bit tricky for TSM to find the kind of fights that they want. They need time to build up Tamado. I think this is his hardest start that he's had. He's still top net worth in his team, but it's just going to take that extra bit longer this game. 11 minute armlet phase is, is not bad at all, but it's not what we've seen from him in general. As you can see, just slightly slower than the average that we've been getting. Just to show how, how much of a rougher time he did have with the way that Amar was able to just take over that bottom lane. Getting that early kill, that solo kill on Tomato as well, being the huge reason for the slowdown. Let's see what TSM FTX's plan is going to be next. Maybe looking to, to fight once Bryle has the Yules done. It's going to be important and, and trying to do their best to use that global silence from Dubu so to give them the opportunities to catch some of these heroes before the BKBs are done. Because, of course, OG, their cause, they are going to be rushing the BKBs straight away. Both Amar and BZM making their way towards them. At this pace, they're going to hit good timing on the item pickup. Yeah, this TSM's lineup doesn't have damage against BKBs. They just don't, right? Like, Wraith King needs more items in order to get there. He's working on a Desolator for now on Tomato. Uh, Leshrac, you've got a little bit of pure damage from Edict. That's pretty much it, right? So during BKBs, I think TSM just are unable to kill enemy cores. And OG know this and are just itemizing for that timing. Global Silence to yeah. save Saberlight. Is it going to last long enough? Ooh. It is indeed just long enough there to make sure he's out before a spear comes out. From Amar, Saberlight will live thanks to Dubu. What's that long cooldown though? A couple of minutes, no global. I highly likely the OG may be able to set up and look for a, another attempt at a kill whilst it's on cooldown. At the least TSM oh, FTX had to be Leander. careful how they go over to there. Half the map, Moon tries for a TP out, but Amar ready and waiting with a spear. See in the mid as well, they're gonna make quick moves over towards Tomato. He's shown himself in the mid, they'll take him out the once. See if they can set up to do it a second time. Silence does kick in on towards the storm. Shackle will buy a little bit of time for them to close in. Zip forward, BZM close the gap, the arena's down. They'll trap Tomato, Tomato will fall. It is huge for OG to know that Global Silence is on cooldown. Like, even though they do save the Dragon Knight top, it just opens up for this mid move. They can play with so much initiative. There's effectively, you almost want to say there's a dead support, right? Because with Silencer without Global at this point in time, level 6, he doesn't offer very much against OG's heroes when they get the initiation. He can contribute when his own team is going first and then prevent the, some sort of a counter combo with Last Word and get a little bit of damage in the slowout with the Curse. But against these jump-in burst moves from Storm and Grim or Mars Grim with a power shot on top, they just 
Sanso doesn't offer very much right now. It is one of the weaknesses of the hero you really need to find value out of global, all right? They know the importance of trying to make moves whilst the BKBs aren't done yet. They find Jiragi. Good smoke up from TSM FTX. See if OG can punish this. TSM's gonna turn up, get himself up to the high ground to see the positioning. TSM FTX back off and look to try and push it on the mid here with the rain of that Elder Dragon form. So a quick kill on the carry and a good opportunity to try and look for another tower themselves. Yeah, Saberlight with his dagger needs to, uh, needs to lead the charge here. He will lead the charge onto an illusion though, and that makes for an easy opening. Yeah, they're gonna get the jump immediately over towards Moon. Moon cookies up towards the high ground, turns with a blast. Spear will finish the job. BZM even thinking about going for more, but the curse does catch him. Low on the mana, he'll pull back. As the Yule's done now, the Bryles. A bit better chance with the setup. Some sort of way to save himself by time if he ever gets jumped upon by BZM. Yeah, not only save himself, but also the possibility to kill, right? If the Storm jumps him and he uses him, it's a guaranteed setup for Split Earth, unless if he gets immediately countered by a Shackle Shot or a Mars stun, but Amar has not gone for Dagger. He's completed a BKB 15 minutes in instead. This Mars is more or less invincible, I want to say, at this point, unless he gets chain stunned until his death. Seems like a tall order, so he can play very aggressively. And I wouldn't be surprised to see OG look for a smoke toward that mid-tier one tower soon if they find any pick bottom that would allow them to get, get that extra bit of map control going their way. Let's see if they can go for Saberlight. Quick blink. As soon as he sees Amar. Definitely the, the struggle for TSM FTX in these team fights will be that, you know, if OG, if they just started off getting one kill inside the arena, they've got so much chase. When you can see you know, BZM, Yuragi, Seb running down heroes. As soon as a, a team fight starts to go downhill for TSM FTX, it's highly likely that they're going to lose hero after hero from the chase down of OG. Yeah, you can't fall behind against this line of in a fight. It's just not going to end well. That's definitely a synergy that Storm and Bloodseeker do have, for sure. I'm sure BZM would have loved that rune, but unfortunately he was all the way back in base with no mana, so Regent's just going to be grabbed by Yuragi. Look at the smoke here. From OG, they're ready to look for some action. Saberlight is going to try and stand his ground. It turns with the Elder Dragon Form and a stun. Amar finding the angle to get the spear over towards the tree. Brow turns with a split up, but he's not able to catch Amar. The Saberlight goes down, and Amar he has got the arena. He's going to try and see if he can maybe get in range to set up for more. With Arena and BKB, he's still very much fight ready. Under the trees, under the tier one tower, they'll stay hidden in the fog. Amar won't quite be able to find them. TSM FTX indeed having to just play so careful here. Really respecting the fact that Amar, he'll absolutely just charge in, drop an arena, and trap any of these heroes that present themselves. I think they're just going to continue to push this mid tier one now. All right. Rao will evade the spear, so maybe OG. Oh, they're thinking twice about it. They don't have to commit either. They do have the Storm and Bloodseeker both farming jungle while they're keeping TSM on their toes around that mid-tier one, so... Nothing much gonna come from this from OG except just, you know, more map efficiency. They're just getting more gold in the meantime, because TSM don't know how many heroes they need to defend with. Effectively, OG just bullying them here with three, with Amara standing in front. This is almost impenetrable wall. They're gonna try to force this BKB here. Let's see what they can do. They get the stun to open things up. Into the, the Ray 5 blast as well. Amar getting low, but now the Ink swells out. The arena's down. He pops the BKB to remove the silence. Spear back on to Brile. They take out the Lesh. Tomato also trapped in the arena. He's trying to run. But Yuragi's gonna sweep him from the side. Get on top of the Wraith King. Take him down the one. Saberlight's been ruptured. He's gotta hold back. Tomato is gonna try with the second line to fight. But BZM's in with the BKB. The Vortex pull back. Tomato taken out a second time. Double kill for Tiger. Moon, he has to come to an end with the kill. He's got to try to escape with the big pole, but he cannot run from this lineup. OG, they take out the three of them. And they're going to take the mid tower now as well. There's just no way TSM defend this. What an amazing play there from Amar. Not only does he, you know, he baits them to go on him, but he holds the BKB until he gets global. He arenas them, doesn't BKB. The moment global comes out, BKB gets a two man spear. You're going to see the replay of it here. Just perfect. And I think TSM may be a little bit naive here. I think you need more heroes if you want to get this kill. You're not going to kill this with just two cores. Notice that global into immediate BKB soloing the Lash more or less effectively. Yeah, good a bit of, bit of heal and protection coming out as well from Tiger. So he has the shard done. And yeah, Saber like that whole fight, unable to get involved as he was held back on the side. With these BKB timings, just not a lot that they can do outside of Tomato trying to get the hits in. And Tomato himself, of course, at this stage, no BKB done for himself, getting completely controlled by OG.
Is that the John Travolta meme? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> huh? Yeah, well. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion in the TSM camp. I'm not sure uh, what caught them off guard there. But um, OG are just outclassing them in this game. All two boot. It's looking very dead here. They get a quick jump onto him. Another kill added to the score here for OG. 16 to 2. As they sweep the map in order to make sure the TSM FTX don't feel safe anywhere that they step out. They've got to be so careful. Especially with Amar leading the charge. Blink BKB, he is ready to catch anybody that he sees. Oh, top lane Saber Light, BZM. He has Arcane Rune. He's not getting out of this one. This is just going to be another one, surely. The Gale Force as well, blowing Saberlight back over towards Seb. Moon Meander. He'll get out of the Blood Right, but he won't get away from these two. Vortex pull back. Another kill for OG. TSM, FTX just seem, seemingly unable to slow them down at all. They just, they don't have the solutions when they get jumped. They need to be so selective with when to use Global Silence, and it's not them taking the initiative. I think. For TSM now, you have to wait for Tomato's dagger, and then it's go time. I think the longer you wait, the more you're going to start. You're just going to continue bleeding. You're losing map control. You're losing the power runes. BZM now getting a DD as well. It's getting worse by the minute. You're running out of time, basically. The moves have to start happening. I think, I don't know, like maybe you can wait for Brawl's BKB, but how many heroes is that going to cost you? It just feels almost impossible not to get jumped by this OG lineup in the meantime. And even if you do farm that item and mitigate your losses, you're still losing on just raw economy from waves being farmed. And so much of this comes down to Amar's Mars being able to just box out heroes, right? Like wherever he goes, how many resources are you going to bring? He's effectively playing Mars like Timbersaw this game. You know, goes to a lane, like, come at me, guys. They're going to have to use so much. Let <laughs> me look at this. The comparison between the two offlaners is quite the world of difference. He's having a perfect game here, Amar. 5 0 6. Insane amounts of CS as well. Way over the 10 per minute. This is a, a very, very scary Mars. And they have so much damage to follow up on it as well. We see as well this game. You know, BZM picking up the early shard. So there's an extra bit of burst from the overloads that he's going to be able to provide his teammates. It means that anybody caught will die in an instance. You know, still at a stage of a game where there's no BKBs up for TSM FTX at all. You get jumped, you will die. Yeah, pretty much. You, the Global Sound says... I'm not going to say it's run its course, because it can still have a major impact, but... I think TSM were planning on more than two kills in 22 minutes with this lineup, so... Yeah, maybe it's time to panic a little bit. <laughs> Better keep it cool. Look for the options that you do have, which are, once again, very item-reliant. So, Dagger on Tomato is complete. Leshrek BKB, 700 gold away for Bryle. I think TSM at that point are going to go for what, from our perspective, almost looks like a Hail Mary. I wonder if Moon. they feel the same way. That Moon is toast. Yeah, it tries to get out in the trees, but Amar knows exactly where he's trying to play out of there with. As he goes down, and now over towards the Roche, OG, no. There's very little that TSM FTX can do to stop them from getting this Aegis into the hands. And, uh, almost certainly BZM. TSM just trying to take something in return. They're working on towards the push down bottom, but TPs are coming in. OG, ooh, not quite able to catch them. Yeah, Stabilite's able to blink out in time, but BZM, he does look to attempt to chase. And TSM FTX will get their way out of there. A bit of damage done to the tier one, but not even able to finish that off uh, with the space they're trying the, to play with. They put the Aegis on the Bloodseeker for Storm. Yeah. Um, I guess BZM just feels so safe in this game that he doesn't need it. A lot of the time you want to put this on Storm because the yep. second life with the full mana bar is just insane value. But it can be right. nice on Bloodseeker for sure. Oh, He's yeah. been found at the top. Let's see if there's any way of getting out of this one. There is, and Brow goes down. Finally getting his BKB now that he's back in the base. Over in the mid, Amart, they just make it play so quickly here. He's going to look for the spear set up. Tomato does have backup of Moon. Anywhere they can save Tomato. Steps coming in from the side as well. Gale Force making sure that Tomato he cannot run back towards the safety of the rest of his teammates. They'll try and run off to the side, but BZM is going to be there ready and waiting for him. They take him down the one. Tomato in position to set up for a second time. Tomato, he's dead for sure.
just an absolute masterclass by OG in this game of, of what you can do with an advantage when you have the right heroes in the right place, you know? You're playing against a lineup that theoretically does have quite a lot of play potential, right? Dragon Tail, you have Wraithfire Blast, you have Leshrac and Snapfire with the long range artillery, high damage, and global silence follow up, but it's OG just completely oppressing them out of their side of the map. Aggressive warding, just quick moves, and taking all of the initiative. And I. It feels bad for Dubu. It's very, very hard to play silencer like this. If your team is this far behind and you're not making moves, you're like, your finger is on global sounds all the time, but you're like, is this the right moment? Should I save it? Is there going to be... Am I going to regret this if I cast it immediately when one of my cores gets jumped? And he has been holding it for quite a while, but we're still missing that move from TSM where they're showing that they're, you know, going to try to find a way back into the game. I think if you keep, again, if you just keep farming even further, now you've got your BKB on Lesh and you're still not trying to take initiative with this. How many more items are you looking for? Are you waiting on the BKB on Dragon Knight as well? Are you waiting on the one on Wraith King? And then once again, how much is it going to cost? Like, how much are you bleeding out? You're going to lose bottom tier 2 at this rate if you don't defend that one. And just a matter of time, you would imagine, before Moon Meander gets his 8th death on this Snapfire against Storm. Just constantly on his tail. Dupa's going to cast spells bottom. It's a bit risky. Showing his position. Well, they, they may look for the chance to dive him immediately. As, as soon as he shows himself with the spells, he's out of there. He knows not to stick around. As OG, and take this tier two tower. TSM FTX continuing to just not be interested in trying to make a move until they have the triple BKBs. Um, Tomato is about 1500 away from his, or rather closer to 2K. And Dragon Knight needing the recipe, so a little less than 1500. So quite some time here, a couple of minutes. It's a dangerous spot to be up top. Oh. Tomato is going to get caught by the controller, Zeb. Jump forward from Amar. Is there any way to protect this Wraith King? Will that reincarnation? It just came back online. Yes, five seconds on the TP. They can't even global TP out here. Arena's out. There's no chance for Tomato's escape as OG take him out. Put that BKB on hold for a little bit longer. I mean, I guess as far as the gold goes, it's kind of flatlined for a bit now for TSM, so... It's... I, I guess in a way they're doing a little bit better than I was expecting given the circumstances, but I'm sure I'm speaking for everyone when we want to see TSM get the next kill, you know? First of all, get a kill. Secondly, the dream scoreline that could bring them back in the game. I think we did get available. that scoreline once before in one of the series, and it we did actually did. turn it around. I want to say, I think it was in the Fnatic OG one. Well, it's not happening it's here. It's not happening here. Sorry, BDM, and... making sure that the dream doesn't occur as he takes out Moon Meander. 23 to 2. He's pretty much got that Lincoln Sphere done. I mean, between that and the BKB. I mean, this is backwards. That's true. That's pretty close. I'll take that. Saberlight. There's still, of course, yet to get that BKB picked up. It looks like he's going to... Oh, no. Okay, PCM's ready to go back in. Not quite able to get the correct read on his position. He's still got some mana to play with. And Seb, he's coming in from the side. They've got the shackles. Saberlight. There's no escape from him. It's like the base tomato just gets taken out. Amar and Yuragi diving the high ground, killing Tomato. They just can't even catch a break. They can't even get the opportunity to get these BKBs done. And every time they get a new item, the same's happening on OG's side. Now we've got a Lincoln Spear up on BZM, getting his level 20 talent after this wave. Just keeps the ball rolling. Yuragi also working on a Lincoln of his own against that Dragon Knight. Right. Now Brawl's gonna go in, but Heroes. I think it's a good stun. All right, right. kisses. That's, that's going to be a dead Jiragi. That's a huge kill for TSM FTX to get. The thing is, the rest of OG, they're ready to fight and take kills in return. Amar, he's taken out Brile. They'll turn over towards Dubu. In fact, Amar, he's going in towards the tier four. Jumps in with the arena, catches Moon. As they may have lost their carry, but Yuragi knows he's not even needed. The rest of his team able to take a very, very favorable trade once again for the squad. I mean, it looked like a potential opportune moment because the Aegis expired and they get that jump on the Bloodseeker who doesn't have BKB. So I can see where they're coming from. You're also a little bit desperate at this point, right? Like nothing has been going your way for 15 minutes. It just feels like perhaps electing a 3v5 there was not the way to go. They did get the kill they wanted, but it cost them everything. On Tomato. Oh, no. Oh, They're making their way straight towards him. He's out with the blink. The Gale Force will start to blow him back. If there's any way they can get any jump, it doesn't look like it. Tomato <laughs> dancing around. And then confident that they won't be able to get the jump on him now. He'll be fine. But still the eternal struggle here for TSM FTX to get these BKBs done on their cores. 
Very, very hard for Tomato and Saberlight to just get out to get that final bit of gold. Saberlight should have it off this creep wave. At least, yeah, very, very close to. <laughs> we you're on the phone with No-Tell. <laughs> If OG are going to be able to find another hit onto TSM FTX before the BKBs are out. Satanic turn on Amar and well on the way towards Lincoln's Fit. This is building to be a, 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 invincible almost really to the damage output the TSM FTX have. And one chance there that they showed the ability to get a kill with Shiragi. Getting caught as close as he was. Unlikely to happen again. 17k lead for OG, 28 to 3. BZM styling on them in the mid, clearing out the wave. That's a BKB for Dragon Knight. So okay, they get cool. one more. Tomatoes is still not complete. Minute 30. Having an absolute terrible time in this game. 0-7-0 zero, zero on the Wraith King. That's rough. I don't think... I think this might be the hardest game he's played all tournaments. Well, I'm sure it is. Question is by what order of magnitude. Just been completely shut out. Just nothing going their way, and you know, this, there's only so much you can do. Like you, like I've talked about, you, you need to kind of select the key moment where you're like, okay, this is when we go for it. This is the, this is our all-in play. I feel like the chance of this all-in play succeeding just goes down minute by minute. Because yeah, sure, you're getting your BKBs. Second Lincolns now. There's Lincolns on Storm and Bloodseeker. You're fighting into Wraith-packed Wind Ranger now, and Amar has Satanic. So. Who are you going to go on? So, so hard for them to get the jump. We can't rely on that Yule setup. They can't rely on that Rape Fire Blast with Tomato when it comes to the cores with the Lincolns. Bottom lane, Saber Light. He's out of there, but Bryal, he's been found. Tries to TP out, but Seb finds him with the shackle. It's Bryal down for 70, of course. Was spending up, so no chance for a bite, but we'll see over towards the mid. Jirag, he's going to look for Moon, and he's going to catch him. The stun connects, Moon taken out. Thirty to three. We've seen quite the difference in the score lines during this major and some some beatdowns. A lot of them done by the hands of OG. This one, when it comes to the kills, pretty much dwarfing them all. Thirty to three. A huge lead on the kills and the gold close by as well. Twenty k advantage for OG. This is generally not the kill distribution you're expecting when you say this game had one kill per minute, but. Uh, you know, one team is accounting for, what's that, 91% of all kills? It's, uh, it's tough times for TSM, you know, you're trying to look for a bright point for them, but they need to present it. It's just OG with all of the initiative, making all the moves. BZM going for a huge dive, if he would have caught anyone there. Uh, that's one yeah. the highlight reel, but no target, no one's connecting on that huge ball lightning. Straight down through the mid with a TP. If, if that connects on Silencer, it is a one shot. Well, here we go. Okay, now it's time. They've got the BKBs. What can Yuragi. they do? They're going to try and jump Jiragi, but he's immediately responsible for the BKB. The linkers of the BKB, they can't, can't quite get through that. They find a stun to connect. Jiragi's fine. Quick reaction, but TSM FTX not to be hard done by. They're going to go for it again. Another smoke. I know that Yuragi's BKB is on cooldown for a minute. This might be the window that they need to, to find some action. But OG, they're fully aware. They're going to start to group up and make sure that if Yuragi is the one to be found, the rest of the team's around him. Look at Amar's positioning. He's just running into Look him. how much HP he has. You don't want to jump this Mars. This guy's not dying. He has Lincolns too. Like... They're going to try and get around Amar and look for the back lines. All right, Amar's going to just run into There's them. the jump. They'll get themselves on top of Tiger, immediately looking for the Grimstroke, they'll get him. Over to the side though, Mile, drop the arena, doesn't manage to catch anyone though, Stable Eye. Turns towards Seven, Yuragi, off to the back lines, BZM will zip straight forward to the wall to do with the God's Review. Takes out the Silence, the Spear as well, connecting onto Moon, two down. Yuragi, he's looking to clean up as well, Stable Eye falls, Tomato goes down the once. See a buyback come out from Moon, Tomato's gonna opt for the BKB, TP out, tries to toggle his way to safety, but he cannot survive. He goes down, chased over towards Browse, Moon with the scatter blast, trying to push back OG, but the shackle connects, triple kill for your GG is pulled, OG! a testament to how well OG's played here at the Major. They make the lower bracket run.
and to do it with the, the newer squad, the newer names, and with a change in roster at the beginning of the major. Seb standing in. In, I mean, these guys, they're incredible. Some of the individual play and the way they're able to pick themselves back up 